Hey everybody, I'm just at a, um, a sacred site. Most of you out there probably would have remembered me doing a, um, a video last year after I got back from um, Camp Makara in Canberra. And you probably remember me bringing up the topic of pyramids that the Tasmanian government put here back in the 1980s because I'm standing on sacred land here <clears throat> and this area according to the history books was where the first settlers landed so it's going to take you for a tour around this area and show you these ridiculous pyramids and why build pyramids instead of just a normal building because this used to be a museum I might get a chance, if I get a chance, I'm going to go and talk to, um, maybe there might be some elders in the Aboriginal community there as well. There's another one around here, there's two of them. Why build pyramids? Hmm? on sacred land, First Nations land. To me, this is just an insult. Are these corporate Aboriginals or what? Are they being paid off by the government? As you can see, I'm very, very passionate about this. And once you've got the eyes to see, you can see. Oh wow, I've just come across the, um, their smoking circle. And they've also got some eucalypts ready to do some sacred smoking. Cleansing of the land. I hope I run into someone here. I'm going to take you up the top of the hill. This is the area when I was a child that I used to pick up on a lot of stuff. As you can see, the pyramids. As far as I'm concerned, it's a bloody insult. Because we know who built the pyramids. And it was a certain ET race that are still seeking dominance on this planet or in this realm, should I say. So yes, when I came here, and it's quite a few years ago, we're backing, we're going back to the 80s. I came here for a school excursion. I would have been in grade four. And um, yeah, it was sort of more, um, I suppose, giving um, honor to these first settlers, honor and respect to these first settlers. See, it's got private land down there. There's a sign. Don't worry, I won't go down past that point. But this is this uh, monument to um, Lieutenant Bowen. 
Lieutenant Bowen, responsible for genocide on this ancient land. 13th of September, 1803. Yeah. I've got some diagrams here of how it would have looked back in the day. Obviously some elders, photos of elders. You know what, this guy here, I've got big question marks about you mate, I don't even know if you're still alive, but you haven't done much to help your people here. And so, apparently, the sailing ships sailed up that small rivulet there, according to the history books. Which, <laughs> as you know, you, you know I think they're bullshit. So, anyway, we're going to go for a walk up the top here, because um, the Tasmanian government did... Um, put in a few, well they actually built some replicas of what would have been Lieutenant Bowen's cottage. Oh yes, they had to take their ownership of the land here, didn't they? As my dad said and called them squatters. <sighs> Lots of dragonflies around, butterflies, new beginnings is what the butterfly, butterfly represents to me. And I must say that uh, I actually had the best sleep last night that I've had since I've been down here and it's been quite an emotional roller coaster. The other day I saw my mum and uh, she didn't recognise me. And I uh, tried to tell her who I was and um, that I was the daughter that she had with Ray Croswell, my father, and her reaction was uh, not what I expected. And I could only stay in the room for not a very long time because she started getting angry. Because she's always been angry. Her whole life, she's always been angry. And she's always pushed people who are close to her away. And it's all a result of what she experienced when she was a child. She never properly dealt with it Psych psychologically, let alone even spiritually. As you can see, there's uh, the top of those pyramids that the Tasmanian government decided to put on this land back in the 1980s. Some beautiful eucalypts around here, blue gums. You can see Mount Wellington just in the distance there. Hobart is certainly becoming more of a built up area. There's so many houses going up, and it's um. 
become very uh, prevalent to me just in the last few days of being here that uh, we have a very aging population here in Hobart there's certainly more older people down here than uh, young people but that was bound to happen because 20 years ago when I left there was a mass exodus of people leaving Tasmania and um, yeah I was talking to uh, my cousin about it and he said that uh, a lot of the um, older people that you're seeing are probably the ones that moved away for a while to another state or maybe another country and then when they're older they decided to move back to Tasmania but yes Tasmania certainly has an ageing population and there's aged care facilities going up everywhere and uh, guess who's um, guess who's uh, got all these jobs in aged care not Australians migrants they're all getting looked after Oh, what's, what's in there? I can hear something. Something in the bush, maybe a rabbit. I'm very much feeling the 3D energy here in Hobart. Uh, because the majority of the population got the jab and of course Hobart, Tasmania and the rest of Tasmania I should say uh, didn't get the lockdowns that a lot of the other states in Australia got but you know this place is very close to Antarctica and all around the Hobart Wharf which I'll be going to later or even tomorrow if I get a chance is full of the uh, CSIRO buildings yes they're the ones that uh, go down to Antarctica it's definitely an underwriting energy but um, that's why I'm going to take my shoes off now because I know I'm walking on sacred land and I do want to connect with the mother so I'm just coming up to the top of the hill Looks like they knocked the old cottage down that they built. Oh no, there's something up here. I'll just keep walking. And of course, Risden Prison. I'll see if I can get a bit of a view of that. It's just, oh yes. You can see Risden Prison. I'll just uh, go over here. See if I can get a better view. Oh yes, there's Risden Prison. I'll just go up here and then I'll magn magnify and go in and you can see. There it is. That's the place that uh, our ex-Prime Minister Johnny Howard convicted where, and without a uh, proper trial because I always thought in this country that you were innocent to proven guilty and then they locked Martin Bryant up virtually for the term of his natural life 
and have basically thrown away the key. But I don't believe Martin's still alive. I think he was, um, I think he's long gone. Because honestly, how can a human being survive so many years in isolation, drugged up to the eyeballs on big farmer crap? The poor guy had a um, IQ of 61. But yet they claim he was able to take out 20 people in that cafe, all headshots. Yes, all headshots. Because they were all decapitated. And uh, apparently the shooter was holding the uh, semi-automatic from his hip area. And yet he got all those um, perfect shots. There's just so much about Port Arthur. And once you start to um, research and investigate, there's many question marks. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't go any further. It's saying private land. So, um... Yeah, I won't go up there out of respect. There was, as I said, a, a, an old cottage up here built by the Tasmanian government, but it's obviously that, that they've taken it down because, you know, it is just a representation of the genocide that occurred here anyway. So, yeah, folks... Just thought I'd show you these pyramids in this area. Because uh, this land had a lot of blood shed and spilt on it. Innocent blood. <sighs> Try not to get emotional here, but can't help but feel the sadness here. Just like I felt as a child. So there's Mount Wellington. And the northern suburbs. Glenorchy, West Moona. Moona, bits of Lena Valley, a lot of them are original tribal names, the suburbs here in Hobart. Anyway, thanks for tuning in folks, I'm just going to get off now and tune into the land here and pay my respects and have some silence here for a while <laughs>